there's a three of these mini automatons which I don't keep with the rest of them because they're so recent or what it is, but I keep overlooking them really. I have to get them out of them more often. This one is bizarre, but they're very, very small. And one of them, incidentally, uh, these are typically uh, ones that they sell for about 20 pounds. But the third and last one I'll show was a very special one which cost me all of a hundred pounds. That one there, incredible. And you'll see why when I show it to you. These all have to come up close to camera because they're so small. Let's have a go with this first one. See if you recognize the creature before I make him perform. Let's see what lift, lift up like that. That's right. That's how it starts. It's called, yes, Kiss Me Hardy. It's Nelson who's lying there prone, stripped to the waist, about to die. And his favorite uh, captain is coming to render a farewell kiss to him, which he does with a mmm and up. Uh, no. Let's see if I can do it without it losing focus. Now, can I make it perform? Mm -hmm. Big, loud, smacking kiss. And I'll put, put it up. It's easy to do it that way. So, the, his favourite captain, Hardy, bends down to kiss the dying Nelson. And it's a very dramatic moment of history, isn't it? Whoa. Wonderful. Well, British history, anyway. Nothing else. This is a much cleverer one. I think this is absolutely brilliant. It's the only one they've ever produced of this sort, this type of thing. It's actually got two figures in it. Well, I've got one with three dollars. So let's see if I can get this into the focus. Now, this is a tricky one because there's actually two figures in it, and one of them is supposed to be miniature. Would you believe that is uh, um, uh, the person is in the back, and the thing in the front is supposed to be a life-size doll? And when you push the back, I've got to see if I can do this with hands. When I push the back, it'll operate the mouth of the... So, so he's got to do a little bit of ventriloquism to make this work. Let me see if I can get it from the other side. This is all very tricky, but have, a, have another go. Oop, there's it. Uh... Uh... I'll see if I can do it with my thumb when I'm doing it, actually. It's probably better. And now, slowly open and close the mouth. So you see what I'm doing at the back? I'm just pushing the lever, and it makes the, the little um, puppet's mouth open and close. Let's see if I can get him closer to him now, yes. And of course, the um, chap is operating, it keeps his mouth entirely pursed closed. He doesn't want to show he's talking at all. He's throwing his voice forward as a ventriloquist should and making this one saying, Hello, how are you today? All right, okay, chump, sit in my lap, a bit more comfortable, etc., etc., etc. So, very nice one, that. So, the last one is this incredibly extensive 100 one. I, 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 he only made a few of these, and I thought, well, should I do it or not? But we'll probably see why when you see what the title of the thing. This is a famous Robert Houdin magic trick from 1890 in Paris, where he brought on stage, it's a mechanical toy, uh, they brought on the, uh, onto the stage, uh, let's turn this a little bit, so that's how it starts, with the, the thing in blue, it should be, actually be in, in, uh, in um, flower, not, not in bloom, that was an orange tree, and when he push the mechanical method thing to work, these oranges would suddenly spring to life and come out like that. At the top was a handkerchief, which he'd borrowed from a lady in the audience before the trick began, and of course the, or the handkerchief eventually flies as if magically into one of the oranges. When he picks up an orange from the tree, opens it, slices it open, there's a handkerchief. Extraordinary. This, ex look at the back of the mechanism to make this thing work. I mean, look at all that. Oh my goodness me. I'll just see. There's wires everywhere. Absolutely amazing amount of detail going into that, which is why it's far more than anything else he's ever made, I think. Well, actually, the knife he's made recently was £900, so... But it's a wonderful action. So there it is with the oranges up. I'll turn that... Ooh, I think there we are. There's the oranges gone back in again. And the original thing was, was a wind-up, that's a wind-up, but it's not a wind-up mechanism here, it's just a single little turn, quarter turn. And when it does that, 
the blossoms the blossom actually dis disappeared i think it was and the oranges appeared in their place so it was an orange tree that suddenly magically grew oranges and when you picked up one of the oranges opened it up sliced it open the handkerchief which had flown there as if by magic from where he put it, where he, just, he vanished it, I think, uh, into one of the oranges. It was that amazing? So that was a wonderful uh, celebration of uh, a, a trick that's, that's much revered by magicians all over the world as Robert Houdin, uh, from whom, for whom Houdini chose his name instead. Let's get this, his, this famous Frenchman's name up into the camera again. There we are. So a very famous trick of his, the one with the oranges and the flying handkerchief. Ah, oh, what a piece. I thought just to finish it off, I'd put them on the table here to show how small they are. And then just for something bizarre to do, I thought I'd get a particularly nice autometer I have picked up, which is a little bit bigger, <laughs> a little bit bigger. Let me see if I can get in the camera. It's one of my dinosaurs, but this is the one I'd forgotten about. I don't think I've ever used it before. It's one of those, um, what do they call them, one with long necks. Anyway, see what he does. He walks and he stops and his mouth opens. There we are, his mouth's gaping. He walks a bit. Then he opens and closes his mouth and he walks it a bit more. He's at the background of these extraordinary automatons. What a wonderful. Perhaps we should get him to kiss Nelson, do you think? <laughs> so wonderful things. Oh yes, oh yes, he is a little bit bigger than the other ones. But I do love these automatons of the um of the St. Ledger couple. They are just amazing uh, work of art. I have 50 of them all together, and these particular three I've shown, particularly that one there. Um I'd forgotten about because I've been putting them in into other cases, so I've got to put them with the rest. With a whole range of 52 of these all together. Yes, they are, they are, they're wonderful. They're one of my favourite discoveries over the last 30 years of toy collecting. Do you like them? Mm -hmm.